Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back to another one of my Shoujo Pool videos today, and today we're going to be talking about the new RGB 5 star unit that you see on your screen here. His animations look amazing, and that is going to be Breeg. Now, Breeg is available for two weeks because he is new, and he's also going to be running with his new artifact, which is also available from the Powder of Knowledge shop. We're also going to briefly talk about Chloe, not much to be said about her, she's not that great. Um, but first, let's talk about Brig first. He's a very, very cool unit, and he is an ice knight, so if you're looking for a good knight for PvE, he's a very good pickup. Now, talking about PvE first, he's extremely good for expeditions. So if you look at his S3 here, it's a 100% chance to decrease defense and speed. Very good in expedition, two of the best debuffs for expedition, and you're also going to see that this has increased effectiveness, and the damage also scales with his max HP making him a decent damage dealer that doesn't need too much effectiveness. He only needs about 12% from gear to actually reach the 80% for Expos because he does get 18% from his Awakenings, which makes him extremely, extremely easy to gear. His S2 is also a barrier to everyone with Perception buff, making him even easier to gear. He also gets an extra turn and will give him Fighting Spirit. And his S1 is a single target attack that gives him CR. This will also scale with his max HP. And when you attack with this, if you reach 100 Fighting Spirit, which can be easily attained after S2 into S1, and on your next turn, use your S1 again, you'll actually cleanse yourself fully and activate your S3 on the target with the highest attacks. So in PvP, this can go into stuff like Spectre Tenebrias, where it's hiding in stealth, or just anything that's stealth. And in PvE, this will be very good for defense breaking the boss. Yeah, his main strength in his kit is that he is super good at defense breaking because he has a full strip on his S3. Keep that in mind, it dispels all buffs, which is extremely, extremely, extremely strong. And also because he can keep that defense break up for a long time, especially in PvE, where bosses don't really cleanse themselves because you S3, right? And then it lasts for two turns. You use your S2 into S1 and then S1 again. That takes two turns total and you're reapplying your S3, right? And his S3 cooldown's only five turns once you actually skill enhance this. And because he has an extra turn built in, he cycles very quick. Also, his S1 gives him CR. So yeah, he can basically perma defense break bosses in expeditions or just anywhere by himself, which makes him so good. For PvP, like I said, he's going to be good at, you know, like countering units such as like Spectre Tenebria. I've seen him be used against uh, ML Landy as well in Guild Wars. He's very strong because his defense break pretty much cripples her a lot, especially because it strips all buffs. You can strip her allies as well from that critical hit resistance buff and then nuke her teammates as well. So a lot of options. He's very, very good at defense breaking, but I don't think he's anything too insane. Overall, though, I don't think he's really a must-have unit. I know his kit looks extremely cool, and he is a husbando, which we don't have in the game, you know, too many of those. But the thing is, uh, I think he's easily replaceable by a lot of units. I think the best thing you can use Breeg for is going to be Expeditions, like Light Expedition, uh, even Ice Expedition, pretty much everything but Earth Expedition, he'll be very good because he can defense break the boss permanently. Um, he's a good Fire Cecilia replacement because he does more damage and because um, he actually can apply that defense break, you know, perma by himself at 100% chance, which is very good. I know Cecilia can do something similar, but from what I've tested for my Expedition runs, my runs actually are consistently scoring higher with Breeg. Um, but outside of that, you're not going to really use him too much anywhere else in PvE. I'm sure he'll be very, very, very strong for Ancient Inheritance if you're running a Knight build. And for Wyvern, he definitely is a decent tank as well. Uh, but overall, not really a must-have unit for PvE. Now for PvP, same thing. Not a must-have unit. You know, he does deal with ML Landy and Spectre Tenebria. Uh, but with ML Landy, it's not really even too much of a hard counter because um, you can still defense break ML Landy and then maybe your units still don't crit and you still get screwed over by counters so you know, not really a super hard counter and for Spectre Tenebria even though he can go into her um, you can't really do too much to her honestly because your regular S3 can't hit her and then your empowered one can hit her but if you don't have follow-up usually Spectre Tenebrias will either life still back up or get healed up and it's pretty hard to deal with them that way so I think Breeg is just a meh unit mediocre I think his kit looks pretty cool and fun to use but I don't really think he's a must-have. Um, I think if you are new to the game, though, and you're looking for a good Expedition tank, then Breeg is a good option for sure. But otherwise, I think it's easy to skip him because we do have the limited um, unit coming out. I think it's limited Lilius, I believe, that won the fan art competition. Um, so she will be getting a limited unit, so you definitely want to save for that. And just in case her artifact's super strong as well, uh, you might want to save even more bookmarks because you might want to pull for multiple copies for that. However, talking about his artifact very quickly, Broken Will of the Priest... Pretty strong artifact, it gives you hit chance, which is good versus evasion units, maxes out at 20%, and also when you attack, you'll penetrate the target's defense by 16%. Now, pretty strong, I think on paper it looks very strong, but 
in practice is not as strong as you think because the hit chance goes up with levels. So if you don't have this max limit break, you're missing out on hit chance. And even though defense penetration is very nice, um, one, a lot of knights don't really care about defense pen. The only ones that do are like damage dealing ones. And two, the damage dealing knights would rather be on like Elbrus Ritual Sword or even something that gives them some survivability, right? So um, Briggs artifact gives them a lot of damage, but there's other knight artifacts that give you damage and survivability. One of the most common ones is going to be uh, limited Charlotte's or Summer Charlotte's artifact, which gives you crit damage and gives you damage reduction, which is very good. Um, and yeah, a lot of good knight artifacts in the game, right? You're going to have like Rocket Punch, which will be used on Karina. One of the best knight artifacts in the game. It's super broken. Uh, tanks will have Aureus, right? And yeah, you just always have different options. If you really need that hit chance, you can just use something like um, Symbol of Unity, right? Because Symbol of Unity is available from the guild shop if I can find it. And basically what it does is it gives you that hit chance you need. And since you don't have to actually summon for it, it comes max limit break as long as you just buy it with your currency. And this gives you the like flat damage increase, which is very good. So I think this artifact is okay. I think it's going to be the best on him, obviously. Um, but even then, there might be some builds that don't want this and want like some survivability, like I said. Uh, but if you do decide to pull for Breek, I think buying at least one copy of this is worth it, especially if you didn't pull one while pulling for him and reaching pity if you guys do. Um, hopefully you guys don't. Um, but I think only he will use this artifact. I'm sure he can use this on like ML Andy and Bellion and like Fire Charlotte or even like Limited Charlotte, but they also have a lot of other options for artifacts. I think this is going to be very good if you're trying to use um, one of the Charlottes or Breeg. So yeah. Now talking about Chloe very quickly. So not going to talk too much about her because not much to be said. She is not that great of a unit. She's only used in hunt one shots because she has um, this magic nail, which will actually be unresistible, which is very, very good because Magic Nail will actually give you a debuff for Rage Set. And yeah, like I said, it's unresistible. So in Stray's one-shot comps with him on Rage Set, uh, he gets that bonus damage from the Magic Nail with the Rage Set. And then because it can't be resisted, you will not really fail any runs, which is very, very good. But otherwise, not really used anywhere else. Um, that's pretty much it. And because of that, not really worth pulling for because you have to invest a lot into Chloe one-shots. And also, like you're not getting much gain because... Even though you have a 100% win rate, it doesn't really matter because if you fail, you don't lose energy in this game. So you can just restart your repeat battle. And because we have background battles as well, uh, not really a point in making 100% like one-shot teams anymore. Uh, but if it's for, um, you know, your vanity or you guys just want to do it for accomplishments, then sure. Uh, but I think Chloe's definitely not worth it. Now, her imprints, though, are very good for made Chloe because her imprints will give her effect resist. So if you have a made Chloe and you like using her a lot in RTA, we all know that made Chloe really wants high effect resist. So you might want to pull for dupes for your made Chloe uh, if you love to use it, right? But keep in mind, like I said, we do have that limited Lilius coming out. So you want to be careful because definitely want to make sure you have at least one pity saved up by the end of the month for when limited Lilius drops, which we'll, we don't really have a definitive date yet, but should drop within a few weeks or months. Now we have her artifact, Little Queen's Huge Crown. This is okay, single target damage increase, and then if the enemy's granted a barrier, you do more. Pretty good on like Arunka, right? But um, otherwise, you're not gonna really need this, and this is a damage boosting artifact, so um, you can always use a different one in place of it, like Symbol of Unity, right? Just like anything. And Warriors have a ton of artifacts that they can use, right? You can use like Prayer of Solitude, even though it's mostly for extra attacks. Um, you can use Golden Rose, you have Benamar's Tachi, right? So I don't really think this is worth buying with your powder. And if you do pull copies, good for you. It's still a decent artifact for like Arunka and maybe for units in the future that deal with barriers. Um, but for now, not really worth purchasing. So yeah, just to summarize, guys, I think both of these banners are with are not really worth pulling for because we have limited lilies coming out. Brig is decent for early players for expeditions and uh, for PvP. If you're looking for like a good unit into ML Landy, I guess, and even like Spectre Tenebria and even just tanks in general because of his defense break. But the thing is, I don't really know if he's worth it. Um, I think he is very, very good against like heavy, bulky teams because what I've seen with Brig is the most success I've got out of him is building him on just like full, like bulk and effectiveness because he does get bonus from his uh, S3 and you just defense break like Soul Weavers and like Knights. Um, but overall, it doesn't really feel like he is a huge game changer for PvP. So his artifact only really for him and the Charlotte and Fire Charlotte and yeah, pretty much it. So hopefully this video helps you guys out guys. And if you guys do pull for one of these units and try to go for the artifacts, hopefully you guys get lucky. But keep in mind, we do have that limited list around the corner. So you definitely want to make sure you save your bookmarks.